Good afternoon, everyone. Hope you are all doing well. I, uh, it's great to be able to talk to you today. Um, surreal not being able to see you and gauge how this is going down, which might not be a bad thing. Uh, but when Natasha asked me what I could talk about and share some knowledge around, um, I started to have a think about what booking transport recruitment team do really well that other teams might not be doing or might not be doing so much of. And one of these things is that we're doing a lot of searching and recruiting of people from overseas. And so what I want to do is share some insight on how Booking Transport developed a need to search, unplug that talent from overseas and how we've set up our teams to be successful at this. And at the end of it, I hope that you, you could all take away at least one learning that you could either um, implement into your own teams or to your own roles. So just to kick things off, get a little bit of interaction and be interested to see how many people are doing this right now. So yeah, I can see it's popped up on the screen. Um, Natasha's put the question of how many hires per year does your business make with candidates based overseas? Um, and just due to time constraints, we'll, we'll literally give it 30 seconds. And I assume that once it goes off my screen, Natasha, you'll give me the nod as to when the results come up. Yeah, absolutely. I'll give it another 10, 15 seconds, and then I'll share the results for you as well. Right. Any final ones coming through? I know some people have tricky and um, have trouble seeing them, so might be some additional comments in chat. But here you go. You should be able to see this results now. Okay, great, good. Well, really pleased to see there are um, lots of people who are doing this already, so almost half the people. Um, but also, also really pleased to see there are lots of people that aren't doing a lot of this. So hopefully, those nine nine companies people um, might be able to get something from this, and maybe at the end we could have a bit of debate with the people that are doing a lot of this. Um, so that's good. Um, great. So that's closed. So thank you for the uh, input there. Um, just really quickly, some intros a bit bit further on myself. So. Um, in terms of, of myself and me, I've been in the industry for 13 years. I'm one of the few people who did a year in industry at university um, in recruitment back in 2007. Um, my, my criteria for replacement was that in, it was in Manchester, so I could use my season ticket, but I, I won't give away which team that was, though, apart from at the time, we were the better team. Um, I like to recruit enough, though, to stay in it. And I've been in-house for the last five years, four of which with Booking.com. Um, we were known as rental cars until a couple of years ago before joining forces with booking. I currently lead a team within a team. Uh, my team are responsible for about 120 hires a year, um, but while still being hands on myself recruiting, which is still good fun. And for me, it's all about doing world class recruitment with that growth mindset, always looking to learn and improve it's something the industry allows with its constant changes and events like today are great for this knowledge sharing across the industry. And to talk a little bit further about who the, the transport business unit are, or TBU. Um, so we're a unit within booking.com. The accommodations business unit is the most recognizable and largest part of the business. This is where you'll, you would go and make your hotel reservation. But the global strategy for booking is to build this connected trip, which brings together hotels, flights, transport, attractions, restaurant reservations, and moving people around on the ground is where TBU come in. So we're pretty key to delivering this strategy and we create products that allow people to make their car hire reservation or to book on-demand taxis, trains, metros, buses, across the globe and it's all pretty cool stuff and it's great to sell to candidates people genuinely are interested in this and the recruitment team we we are pivotal to the growth of the business making sure we've got the right talent here and we have our own in-house team we're 12 people at the moment um, it's peaked at 15 so quite a chunky team um, and we're a great team of highly skilled and motivated recruiters we spend a lot of time building the culture in the team, developing the talent within it, reflecting on ways of working, making improvements to keep us uh, or to keep up even with the demands of the business. And the goose you can see there is um, it's a weekly award that we, we give for the goose of the week. It's recognizing someone in the team who's led from the front, 
Um, if you've not heard of this concept before, go and do a bit of reading around uh, leadership lessons from Geese. It uh, makes it a good read. So what's the problem? Why are we talking around uh, recruiting people from overseas at booking.com? Well, um, not to be too boring, but a bit of data might help in this. So um, what you can see here are the hires for what we call customer experience, which are the core tech roles in engineering, product and design, plus others being everything else that makes a business run minus our customer services. Um, 2018, pretty major growth brought on by building lots of new product teams in addition to replacing that attrition. Um, 2019, continued growth, um, not as fast, um, but some harder to fill roles in 2019, still dealing with that attrition. Um, having some of the biggest teams in these areas in, in the Northwest means that we, we naturally become a poaching ground for talent, which is why we, we have certain levels of attrition. And here we've got a screen grab from our ATS greenhouse. And this is the funnel for just one of our engineering roles in 2019. It shows the pass through rates. Numbers are fairly typical across most of our roles, uh, give or take a few, but in engineering in particular, it's a difficult area to recruit for given the high bar we have on skills and the volumes needed. And so what we can do from here is um, having this data, it's, it's super useful to help us understand workload and capacity and to forecast more accurately. What we can also do is we can reverse engineer the numbers and we can decipher from the data that to um, get one higher in, oh, sorry, let's start that line again. And from the data, we need to add 10 applications into Greenhouse um, with the vast majority coming from search, um, LinkedIn emails, uh, other tools that we use. Um, that's just for one offer, but our, with our response rate being around 25%, um, we're probably up to 40 reach outs per offer, which if we look at the numbers from 2018 for engineering, 188 engineering hires, um, just in that area alone, it, it we're looking at seven and a half thousand reach outs needed for those hires, which when you go and do a quick LinkedIn insight search, approximately 5,000 software engineers or developers with Java in the Northwest, you quickly realize there aren't enough people to target in the area. And this is not even considering or factoring in um, the people we've met previously or rejected previously, um, people who've worked with us before, um, people who aren't interested in changing jobs or they just don't want to work at booking. Um, so you can see we, we've got a, got, a, got a challenge here. And so we've come up with a solution to this. Um, not groundbreaking, given the title of the talk, but it's to, uh, it's to go and think about how do we uh, recruit from overseas. So um, to meet the demands of the business, we've had to think outside the box that box being the Northwest and the UK. And um, we need to hunt in those areas that are less obvious with um, lots of options and, lot, and less competitive for talents, particularly if we think about people who are motivated to come to the UK and want to work for a big brand like Booking. So over the last few years, we've been very specific about making sure we, we search across the globe and, Primarily, EU candidates have been the focus. This is going to change for sure going forward, um, but also from tech hubs further afield where we take in candidates through a visa process. <clears throat> so to do this, it, it takes a bit of thought. It's, it's not just a case of deciding overnight to, instead of recruit people from Stockport, recruit them from Stockholm. There needs to be a, a distinct plan backed with the right people, the right skills, using the right tools in the right business. And I'll, I'll, I'll briefly talk you through what we're doing in each of these areas that sets us up for success to attract this overseas talent. So the core of it and the starting point, it, it is the people within the, um, the TA team, within the recruitment team itself. And our hiring strategy into the team ensures that we, we are bringing in highly skilled recruiters. We, we like people that have worked in-house for tech businesses before, but also high performers in the agency world. And we fought internally 
to sign off on healthy salaries to attract great recruiters. And, and during that interview process, we delve into those sourcing skills, um, their ability to manage stakeholders and make sure they, they fit our culture. Um, but also during that process, we make people know this is a delivery role. We make them know that it's a role where you have to have that search mentality. And we look for people that get that kick out of sourcing and who know that these are project-based roles. And once they join the team, it's to keep that motivation in the recruiters. We give them that autonomy in their roles. And most are given an area of recruitment to own. And they have a group of stakeholders to manage. We see results through people being inspired to do a good job, mastering their craft and creating that sense of purpose in the team, which is why um, we have a group of people who like what they're doing. They, they like being in the team. And keeping people on track with specific delivery focused objectives too. And through setting objectives, which not only bring benefit to the business, but we also make sure that it helps develop their own personal skills, which, which builds into their own um, career goals and career aspirations. Which feeds into the skills of the people team. Um, the other one of the other four parts that I mentioned that we put a lot of thought into. And even though we talk about bringing people in with experience, we like there to be that stretch opportunity to continue to develop. And um, we don't want people to be at the top of their band when they join our business. And when we think about what makes a great recruiter, we think of them having strengths across the three core pillars of sourcing, stakeholder management, and candidate management and bringing all these three together um yeah we, we feel it makes a, a real strong compelling recruiter and so well apologies this is a little bit of a boring slide um, but what it does it lists some of what we're doing to bring up the skill level within the team um we've got a toolkit of ideas and initiatives um some of them here are that we teach people how to build for example, a proper sourcing strategy, map out what activities are needed to recruit the role, often identifying locations overseas to target and make sure the market's covered. And because we see results from this, um, we bake into objectives, hires from overseas to encourage this behavior too. Um, we're teaching recruiters that also how to give candidates that reassurance and manage any concerns or objections about a move to the UK. And you know, this comes in the form of uh, writing compelling messages, uh, reach outs, creating collateral to share with candidates, um, talking them through how it would all work. And an extension of that, it's the handholding of um, the candidates that you might do a little bit more of than with a local person. So we'll spend that extra time getting to know their situation, their family, talking through logistics and answering all their questions. But, but as a team, uh, we also do um, a couple of initiatives around. Uh, we have our knowledge sharing sessions where uh, we come together to discuss problems um, or share successes. And sometimes the topics of overseas candidates comes up. And we also hold our quarterly retros where we come together to reflect on how we performed as a team over the last three months identify those improvement areas, take away actions to help us go faster. And sometimes these were pieces of work linked into how to search overseas or a project to improve this. And um, we're quite a well networked and quite a popular team in the business. And we, we have agile coaches help us with this and um, L&D support us with all of our learning too, which is fantastic. And, and just finally on this point, um, a really powerful development tool we use as well is 360 feedback from stakeholders and candidates and while it's not always linked into candidates coming from overseas we'll openly take the feedback on how we did and um, use that feedback to help grow people um, and work on, on areas of improvement so looking at the tools we use to help us as well specifically with this search When we look at what we're actually using with, there's a real range of different 
techs uh, available to us. We're fortunate as a tech business ourselves to have a bunch of tools available for all employees that the recruitment team leverage. And um, I can't pretend that LinkedIn isn't our main search tool. Uh, we're getting over 70% of our hard to fill roles uh, hired through LinkedIn. And we have the super duper package, which gives us more emails than we can send in a year, access to the um, LinkedIn insights, the ability to run targeted campaigns, but but on the search front, it's about how you use the tool and where we're clever in how we build projects, who we approach, what we say to them, and not always taking that spray and pray approach. Um, remote interviewing, as we know, is a big thing now. Um, we were we were pre-COVID ready for, um, or actually we were ready for remote interviewing pre-COVID, and we've been using Blue Jeans as our PC software. Um, conducting remote interviews for a number of years and we've had to consider the intricacies of how best to do this from the, the prep you give the candidate the tone of the session training for interviewers getting the right mindset um, all things really important to um, a real effective virtual interviewing experience um, the booking career site um, that opens up opportunities with the brand uh, and its global reach we often attract people who haven't thought about relocating to Manchester, but once the candidate is hooked, we can make the sell. And Hacker Rank is a crucial tool for us for our engineering recruitment, particularly when considering non-local candidates. It's that extra layer of assessment, which gives us reassurance on candidates before they, they come over and travel to meet us. And uh, coupled with that, we developed a, a really effective pair programming task, which can also be um, done remotely. So. You know, here, here are just a few of the little tools and tricks that we're using um, to help us with our search. But while as a team we can influence these three areas, we still need to be, uh, we still need the right business support even to make all of this happen. And we, we're lucky enough to have that as a recruitment team. And I think this is where we're able to stand out of the crowd with the viable option for candidates considering relocating and why we've been successful in bringing people from overseas. Um, firstly, we're already a multicultural business with over 100 different nationalities. It, it helps us attract a diverse group of people by sharing this info. Um, we're clever in using people from certain countries in an interview loop or just introducing them to share their stories. Um, and our referral scheme helps when someone relocates, when they think about friends or colleagues they've left behind. Um, the effect can be exponential um, if used properly and the recruitment team really push referrals. A real nice touch as well, particularly for some of our senior candidates, are the orientations of Manchester. Um, so when we have a serious candidate to consider, we'll bring them to Manchester to see the city, we'll roll out the red carpet, we'll invite family members, take them for dinner, um, use a relocation partner to give them tours of areas to live, and schools for their children. Um, and as a business, we're set up to sponsor candidates for visas, which is only used for certain roles, but we brought some key people into the business this way. Um, our relocation package, um, we've previously been at a cash payment to cover moving costs, but going forward, we'll be using the, uh, the global booking.com mobility team, which um, essentially covers everything from hotels, flights, moving costs. And um, we've also got loads of ongoing support to little things like um, an arrangement with HSBC to set up a bank account in 24 hours or um, advancing their, um, their, their relocation bonus a little bit early to help them with those moving costs. Um, but the overarching message here is that the business has the right mindset to encourage recruiting from overseas, which comes at a cost, but we know it brings the, re brings the return. And individually, all four areas are important, but rely on each other to make a compelling case from uh, sourcing overseas. I think you need to look at each area separately though to make sure you're doing what you can, um, get the results from this and useful to break it down into these groups. So last few slides for the constant time, um, over and very slightly by minute, but um, I mentioned earlier the impact of Brexit um, and the new immigration rules, uh, which will affect all of us here in the UK. Um, we'll be applying for those licenses, I'm not an expert on these, I'm going to watch back the session just before this one. 
Um, but the principles remain the same of what we talked about, um, still hunting out over some of those areas that actually will open up an opportunity, some of those non-EU countries we've not explored before. And aside from the obvious benefit of being able to fill our vacancies for all of this, there's also the much wider benefit to the Northwest community. Um, and as one of the larger tech employees, employers even, um, we have an obligation to ensure there's development and replenishment of that tech talent in the area. Anyway, if you look at this, I've been sharing some of our, our trade secrets, but um, I see it more of an opportunity to share great ideas um, of how we bring top talent to the area, which if more companies do, um, is only a benefit for everyone else in the area. So um, we're very happy that everyone else is doing this to, to bring more great talent to the area. But it's important, I say, we're not just solving the tech shortage issue by throwing money at it. It's just one of the initiatives to make sure we're creating opportunities. Um, we're part of loads of communities and meetup groups across the Northwest, um, sponsoring events, hosting them in our building. Um, we link into universities, we're part of the apprenticeship programs. And this year, the Tech Returners program was something we're really proud of, the, the chance to bring um, um, women back into tech. And uh, that's been a real proud moment for us to do that. So as a bit of a wrap up um, and takeaways from the session, but go away and understand if you would benefit from introducing more overseas recruitment to your business. So maybe those nine people that um, are doing naught to five hires. Asking if the business is set up to support this and if not, seeing what needs to be done. And making sure you have the right people in place to deliver this, both in terms of hands-on recruitment and leadership. And finally, is the business, business prepared to invest and think long term? So thanks very much for listening. I hope it's been useful.